it is really good to be back, and as, as Chris said, and as I said earlier, and uh, Chris, when I went to work at the University of Missouri, everybody on the hall knew more about forage crops than I did. Uh, and I spent a fair amount of time with the phone on hold and going door to door to get an answer. And I kept track of this. It took nine months for somebody to ask me something I knew stone cold off the bat. Uh, so yes, I, 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 your learning curve is always, you can always learn. And in fact, that's what is a good intro to this because we've been making baleage at the University of Kentucky since 1983. We started with the, the bags and roll bales and sucking the air out of them, and that was a hit or miss proposition. And we've advanced to where we are today, but yet you still, still, still hear anecdotal evidence of problems and uh, of, of things, uh, off type silage, uh, even fatalities due to botulism. So I thought, well, the heck with this. We just got to do a better job. If we're recommending this system, We've got to do a better job of understanding this, the system and what factors lead to the production of successful haylage. And so I'm going to do my best to give you the short answer in five minutes of a study that's ongoing. So just to recap the things that we think we know, good baleage has moisture content between 40 and 60 to 65 percent. That asterisk will become apparent why it's there a little bit later. Tightly baled to exclude as much air as possible before we wrap it. Put six layers of plastic or more. Some of our early stuff would say four. That's adequate, but it has no insurance for um, pred uh, not predators, uh, things that would tend to uh, nick the plastic. Cut early so there's more water-soluble carbohydrates. And it, it always strikes me as a little bit ironic that you have to tell that we find ourselves needing to say out loud uh, the, the basics of fermentation in Kentucky. We are a value-added ethanol state. We understand fermentation, right? But sometimes not in this context. Not in this context. We want the pH to, at the end of this process of the, of the forage to be 5.0 or below. That's what makes it stable. We want lactic acid 3% or above in dry matter on a dry matter basis. And butyric acid 0.1% or less. So the project purpose was to better define the quality of our haylage, especially, and this is what we didn't measure, have not measured as often as we would like, the volatile fatty acid profile, the VFA profile. And then to determine from talking to farmers and looking at the bale characteristics, what affects that profile. Because we want lactic acid, we don't want butyric. And then we want to, to develop confidence in, in the quality and the ideally the safety of Haylage for livestock consumption. And we're using butyric acid as a marker for bad or possibly toxic silage that, and when we say toxic, we're thinking of the botulism toxin that is the product of clostridial fermentation or uh, clostridial infection and growth in the bales. Okay, so this is the gist of it. This is what we did. We located a diverse set of bales and analyze for moisture in particular, nutritive value, the usual things, and the VFA profile, especially looking at lactic and butyric. I do want to thank, and uh, you always find typos when you put your stuff on the screen. Here we go. Brandon Sears, uh, S-E-A-R-S, not S-R-S. -S. Corinne Belton, Levi Berg, Don Sorrell, April Wilhoit, Tommy Yankee, and Jeff Limcooler for assisting with the collection and identification of samples, and to Dr. Craig Wood, our program leader, who took on uh, some of the analysis costs this year. So here's what we did. Uh, what I'm going to do is present to you the summary of the 2017-2018 data. We're still doing this, but we're, so the data you're going to look at is from Fleming, Henry, Shelby, Anderson, Bourbon uh, counties. We use, there's a, a wide, range, wide range of things, small grains all the way to uh, alfalfa and alfalfa grass uh, cut and baled after Thanksgiving. 44 samples total, moisture content average was 59%, uh, 22% to 80%. And we're expanding this. And in fact, uh, Kevin Rust, are you still in the room? Kevin's still here? Yeah, there we go. We sampled some of Kevin's silage uh, in Campbell County this year. 
So we're looking at, at all of these. What do we, so what do we find? The forage quality was excellent. Across the board, top to bottom, the forage quality was really good. So we've been able, so these producers have been able to capture and harvest high quality feed with the Baylitz system. The best producers are using that six plus layers of plastic. But here is the take home aha, and that is not what we expected to see fall out quite this dramatically that moisture content determine fermentation and higher moisture content is better. And you might have said, okay, but, the, lit, but the, the textbook says that. But let's look a little further. This is what happens when you graph all of our bales, to moisture content on the horizontal axis, and total acid, which is primarily lactic, on the vertical. R squared to 0.76 is the correlation between those two things moisture content and, and total acid. 76% means that that moisture content explains 76% of the variation in volatile fatty acids across those samples, which is, in a biological system, huge for one factor to explain that much. And you can see, we're looking for, we were looking for that 3% number for lactic, and then what moisture content was that? 60% which is at the upper range of what we would consider acceptable, okay? And why that is important, we'll, we'll tease out just a bit later. But it, here's what I would like to show you, too. This is moisture content and butyric acid, which is not the good stuff. It's the bad stuff. We didn't get a lot of butyric until we got here in the 75, 76, and 80% moisture content silage. When you go back and do a little backstory, this was basically unwilted, almost direct cut small grain silage. Small grain silage has a lot of inoculum, typically for clostridium, because it's, there is typically some dirt in that because there's a lot of bare soil between the rows of small grains. That's where the clostridial bacteria are. <coughs> High moisture content leads to clostridial growth and butyric acid formation. <coughs> Pardon me. Okay, so last slide. Quality was good to very good. Dry baleage did not ensile well, but it fed well. And there's a work from uh, Dr. Shinners that uh, Dr. Limcooler showed you uh, in Wisconsin where he's wrapping hay of all, all moisture contents, everything from dry hay all the way up to silage. And as long as we are wrapping it well, it keeps well, at least over the winter. You, it, we, we've had train wrecks with trying to keep it two winters or over two seasons. Moisture content was highly correlated to good fermentation with more of our favorable results at the upper end of the moisture content range. And in fact, if you could peg 60 or 65, that's kind of where we want to go. And the very high moisture baileys did produce high butyric acid content, but only in one sample. So. At the end of the day, if we get a firm, if you have a set of baleage that you wonder about, and is it too wet, then we can get a fermentation profile. We can tease out that butyric acid content, and we can we can be a lot smarter about knowing whether or not to expect feeding problems with a lot of haylage. So, thank you very much, Chris.